Good morning, gentlemen. We continue with our overview of Menachos. And once again, we're going to talk about a person who accepted upon himself a pledge in somewhat of an ambiguous manner. And we have to take his neder and we have to figure out how we can guarantee that he will fulfill his neder. And if you're following here, it's on the bottom of page Gimel on the right side, the next to the last paragraph, I know there minchas mafet, mafet tan. Now let's just review what we know, but we may have forgotten. And that is that there are five categories of minachos, which are minchas neder unedov. And amongst those categories, two out of the five are what we call mafetani. And those two subdivide into chalos and rikikim. And we said that chalos are, are softer, I'm sorry, are harder, and rikikim are softer, where it might reflect on the different sizes, the difference between Alos and Rikikim. Um, it says Chalos Ovos, Ovos with an ayin, not with an olive. So Chala is thicker, and Rikikim or Dakim are thinner. Now, what's common to both Chalos and Rikikim on the following two major points. Number one, they are both loaves of bread that are baked in the oven, as opposed to machvas and marcheshes. And number two, they are both subject to the laws of petita. Right? Petita we haven't gotten to yet, but it has to do with the way we break down the chalice into smaller pieces. And this applies to both Chalos and Rikikim. So now the man took upon himself an unspecified pledge called a Minchas Mafet Anu. He did not specify whether he wants Chalos or Rikikim. And here we have a Machlokes between three different Shitos in the Tanoim recorded in the Gemara in Menachos Adaf Samach Gimel, Rabbi Shimon Shita, is that he can take one mincha and divide it into two. Half will be chalos and half will be rikikin, which means that according to Rabbi Shimon, the similarity is greater than the disparity. The common denominator between both Kalos and Rikikim is strong enough to allow him to integrate both into one entity of a carbon minister. Uposasan, and he does the Psisa because both a Minchas Mafishal Tanur of Kalos and of Rikikim require Psisa. And they also have other dimensions of the avoda of and akrava of mincha in common. They both can be mixed together. There's a locha of bulila, which means that when you take the various components of the, you know, the raw materials of a carbon mincha and you put them together in a kli, it's got solace and it's got uh, shemen and levona and so on. So they're all mixed together. And he does a kmitza, right? We always said that a mincha required, has two parts to it. There's the kmitza, which is the part of the mincha that gets burnt on the mizbeach, and the balance is eaten by zichrei kahuna. So then, according to Reb Shimon, all of this will apply in this hybrid karban minchas mafe shaltan. It's a hybrid because it's comprised of both Chalos and Rikikim, 
and the carbon is brought as one entity with all that's involved. Far, you know, we have mechza, chalos mechza, rikikim will have one ptita from all of them, will have one komets for all of them, and one blila for all of them. What happens according to Shimon, if when he did the kmitza, all he got in, into his comments was one or the other, either chalos or rikikin? Does he have to touch base with both a minimum of a misa of kmitza with both chalos and rikikin? And the answer is no. We are now integrating both the chalos and rikikin into one entity. And wherever he does the comments, it's on the chalos or the rikikin, that's fine for the entire entity. Rabbi Yehuda disagrees. He says, we don't bring both of them together. And if he has a question, it's ambiguous. And he doesn't remember whether he, whether, whether his... His mincha is meant to be chalos or kikin. He'll have to bring two minachas to fulfill both possible pledges. However, but the Eved, if he only brought one, and that mincha was an integration of both chalos and rikikin, yotze yedei chavos. And then we have the sheet of Rabbi Yossi, where Rabbi Yehudi says that no way, no how, the halacha could not validate a mixture of chalos and rikikin, even to the Eved, and the only option that he has available to fulfill his neder is that he brings a full-fledged carbon mincha of mafet tanur shel chalos and another full-fledged mincha of chalos of of of, of tanur of rikikin. Now let's ask a more basic question. We said that there are five different categories of minachas. We had. The first category was called Solas. What, what was the name of it? Let's just get it. Uh, it was called Minchas Solas. And then we had Machvas, Marcheshes. And then we had Mafetanur Shel Chalos, Mafetanur Shel Rikikin, five different categories. What happens if the man takes upon himself a Mincha? That's all that comes out of his mouth. And in the context of an Adav of a Mincha, there are five different options. So the Gemara quotes a machlokis between the Chacham and Rabbi Yehuda. The Chachamim is, are of the opinion, Yavi achas michameshes mine minchas nedava, eza mihen sheyirtze. He has in front of him a choice of five different options. There are five categories of a, of a minchas nedava. He could choose any one of them. The fact that he didn't specify means that he allowed himself, deliberately allowed himself the option of choosing which of the five minachas he wants to bring. Rabbi Yehuda disagrees. And he has a principle, stam mincha is a minchas solis. Why? Because whenever the word mincha is used, and there's no shame levi, there's no adjective attached to the word mincha, to the noun mincha, then we assume that Stam Mincha is solace. Other Menachos always have an adjective, another word attached to them, a descriptive word. Is a Minchas Marcheshes, a Minchas Machmas, a Minchas Maisetanur. Okay. Now, Rabosai, the next paragraph. I'm just going to explain to the best of my knowledge. I don't understand what's going on. I just simply don't have the, the knowledge. We know that on a daily basis, they brought Aitzim, logs of wood, to the base on Migdash, and they designated it for fire for the Mizbeah, for the Marocha of the Aish, the fire on the Mizbeah. And those are called Gizrei Eitzim. The word Gizrei, which refers to small sticks of wood, a minimum length of one amal, 
is in the plural, gizreits. So when a person pledges to bring eitzim to the Mizbeach, he is pledging a minimum of two gizrei eitzim. That much I understand. But from now on, I don't know what's going on. Hamisnadev eitzim le Mizbeach. The sheer, the minimum amount of eitzim is l'chopo shnei gzirim, which are two chatichos eights. Each one has a length of an am. L'das Rebbe, nechshavim eitzim elu lemincha. Now, again, I, I'm not sure what's going on here. I know that the Eitzim are going to be burnt on the Mitzbeach, and Mitzbeach is also burnt on the at least the Kohetz of the Mincha. But I'm not sure what, what the point is to classify Eitzim as a carbon Mincha. And he says, therefore, all the Dinim of Mincha apply to these Eitzim. I'm totally lost. Yeshla Molcham Kiddin Mincha. Apparently, the law of Malicha applies to Mincha in a very unique way. I don't know. We didn't get to that yet. And to Unim Agosha, we require bringing them to the Keren Dromis Maravis. Shalom is Bech Mincha. Okay, even that I can tolerate. But the next line is totally meaningless to me. I, I don't have the basic ideas here. Ledas Rova, Lashitas Rebbe, Af Tzricha Kmitza. I understand that a carbon mincha needs Kmitza, and the essence of carbon mincha is Kmitza. How do you do Kmitza on eight? Does he grab them in his hand? And I, I, I just, there's a footnote here, but it doesn't help me at all. The Afshakulam Nisrofim al Gabi Mizbeh, and Komakom Yeshla Hatir as Komton Luchud as Shireim Luchud. Yeah, I just don't know what the Mitzvah is. How do you get a comment of Eitzim? He quotes in the footnote, Tosis is bothered by a different question because the Eitzim are completely burnt on Mizbeh. In the case of a Mincha, we separate between the Kometz, which is burnt on the Mizbeach, as, as opposed to the balance of the Mincha, which is eaten by Zichrei Kahuna, but in the case of Eitzim, it's completely burnt on the Mizbeach. So you can't separate between the Kometz and the balance of the Eitzim, whatever that means. And Tos says, I'm not bothered by that, because what he's going to have to do, he's going to have to burn on the Mizbeach the Kometz of the Eitzim as a separate entity, a separate Maisak Torah, and then I'll have another Maisak Torah on the balance of the eights and beyond the comets. Right? And I just don't know how you do commits on eights. And if anybody knows, don't worry about embarrassing me. I, I, I'll be embarrassed, but Tori. Uh, that piece of the puzzle, I don't know. Then he quotes Rava. That Rava has a sheet of Rebbe that you need Kmitza. And then Rav Papa says that according to Rebbe, Trichem Eitzim Acherim Lehasikon, Gam to Unim Yemin, the Kiddush Kli Kemincha. So Rav Papa is going to add, apparently, the name of Rebbe, a whole another list of what the equation between Eitzim and Mincha generates. It generates. What's called Yemin. I guess he means that the Avod has to be done on the with the right hand. And you require Kiddush Kli. Every Minch has to be poured into one single Kli Shares to sanctify it. And the Eitzim have to be brought in a Kli. What kind of Kli? Kli Shares. Only then can you be Makhtir the Eitzim on the Mizbeach. He also adds here which means the following. Logically, I would say that if you want to double his Eitzim, just light up the Eitzim and burn them on the Mizbeah. Take the Eitzim and put it onto the 
you know, on the campfire, on the pyre. No, he's got to take other fuel, other eitzim, and with them light the eitzim that he's bringing for his nidava. Just like in a, a mincha, you have eitzim that are burning on which you put the comet mincha to, to achieve kapara. So too, the gizri eitzim that he's bringing are like a mincha that he's bringing, and now you have to burn with other eitzim, create a fire. You can't use the gizri eitzim themselves as, as the fire to light themselves up. Okay, now we get to the next pack, which is a little bit easier for me. We have an entity, a parsha in the Torah called Minchas Chote. Now, what is a Minchas Chote? Which sins generate a carbon mincha? So one is called Shmias Kol Olam, which means that a person has testimony and he refuses to admit that he knows when the, let's say, tovea, what's it called in English, the plaintiff, says to the witnesses, hey, you guys know what testimony that could help me to force my the defendant to pay me up. And the agent said, no, 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 we, we don't know anything about it. And then the plaintiff is mashbia the agent, that if you know Adas, come and testify. And only later on, after they accepted the Shmua, did they do Chuba with a contrite contra heart, and they admitted that, in fact, they did have the Adas. They have to bring a carbon Minchas Kote. Number two, someone who enters into the Migdash and he was unintentional about his state of Tuma, or he eats kachim. He was unintentional about his state of tumor. He's a shoge. Then we have the case of someone who takes a shua sheker. He says, I never ate it, but he really did eat it. And these are cases where the chote has to bring a minchas chote. Now, there's a concept called a carbon chatos ola viorit. What are those cases? These are cases where a person's financial status will determine the nature of his chatos. If he's wealthy, he'll bring a female goat or a kizba, a female a little shepsula. If he's not wealthy enough to afford to bring a chatos of a kizba, a seira, then he's an ani and he'll bring shtei torim mm or shnei bnei yona. Echel lechatos, echel liola. He'll bring two birds. Vadal shabdalim. If he can't even afford birds, then maybe alei misaron soles lemincha. He'll bring an isaron, which we said is the minimum volume of solace for any mincha. So all the averis that I mentioned earlier, like Shua Sheker or Shamakol Ola, and Nichnas Lamigdash or Ochel Kachim Bishkaga, when he was Tame, in all those cases, whether or not he brings a mincha depends upon his status financially. And in the lowest financial uh, strata, which is called Dale Dalus, he can't even afford two birds, he'll bring a minchas chote. Now, Every mincha requires an accompaniment of shemen and levona, with the exception of a minchas chote, which is called charevo, or yevesha. It's completely dry. Nothing is added to the solace. It's what you might call, if I could use the phrase, a bare bones mincha.
And this is all based on the fifth chapter of Sefer Vayikra, and that is the story of the Shoma called Ola, of the Edim who knew testimony and they took the truth to the effect that they don't know testimony and they finally admit the truth. Now, what happens, this is unique, a unique question in, in the matrix of Menachos, unique to Minchas Chote. All other Menachos require an accompaniment of Shemin and Levon. What happens if, I'll give you the following scenario. The, the Chote, even though he's very poor, and he can hardly afford solace, you know, buying a you know, Isaron, an Isaron of flour. But he says, you know what? I want to beef up this, this minute. It's too dry for me. So he adds Shemen or Lavona. We'll see exactly what the minimum amount that he added. To his Minchas Chote. And as we said before, a minchas chote is meant to be chareva, yevesha. But he adds shemen. He wants to be a big shot. No one wants to feel inferior as an ani. Ah, never. You know, we have such compassion and you'll bring the driest, bare bones mincha. He says, no, no, please, add the shemen, add the levon. Is there an option to do so? The answer is absolutely not. And if he adds shemen, of a shear of, we'll see if it's a kezayis or a man, then he violates a love in the Torah, and he gets malchus for that. I'm not sure who's getting the malchus here. Is it the chote? More likely it's the coin. Somehow the chote convinced the coin to, to be in cahoots with him, and the coin added shemen or levona to this minchas chote. And the Torah tells us in Vayikra, hey, lo yasim oleha shemen, lo yitain oleha levona. And these are two lavin counted in Taryag, which generate malchus. And therefore, im nasen ba shemen o levona loke, im nasen shneem, he added both Shemen and Levona. Each one of these two have a separate lav. Lokish time will give him 78 Malkas. If he added both Shemen and Levona to one single Mincha, so we have now a chote who is a repeated criminal and he has one mincha that he has to bring and another mincha that he has to bring. If he adds levona and shemen to one mincha, in such a case, it's considered one lav and he gets only one set of malchus. But if he brings two minchas chotes and in one he added levona, in the other he added shemen, he'll get two sets of malchus. Very strange halacha, no? Because, are we talking about two different lavim? If they're independent, one or the other, then if he added both to one karma mincha, he should get two sets of malchus. So he clarifies this in the footnote. Fascinating. When the Torah engenders a lav for adding shemen or Levona, that only applies if the Mincha per se, if not for his addition of Shemin or Levona, would be Kshera. It's a Mincha Kshera. A Mincha Psula is nothing. It's, it's a, it's a, on the expression, it's a piece of rubbish. There's no Easter lav to add uh, Levona or, or Shemin to a piece of garbage. Now, if he's got one Mincha, and he adds both Shem and Levona, he could only get one set of malchus because what did he add first? It's irrelevant. Either way, either he added the Shem first or he added the Levona first. Once he adds one of them, the Mincha becomes a Mincha Psula. So the Torah not only prohibits you from adding this, but it hassles the karma. 
and therefore it becomes a piece of rubbish, as we said before. And when he adds number two, which is the Shemin or Levon or whatever sequence, he doesn't get Malchus. But if he has two Menachos, he's a repeated criminal, he's got a criminal record. Then if he adds Shemin to one of those Minchas Chotes and Levona to the other, he'll get two sets of Malchus. Because each mincha became possible as a result of adding either shemen or levon. I just add one point, Lefiani is daiti. What happens if he adds shemen to two different minchas? I would say he gets two sets of mountains because he violates the Easter of, how did the apostle say it? Of Lo Yasim or Le Hashem, and he violated that Isa twice. And the same thing for Levon. The Kiddush here is that if he adds both Shemin and Levona to one Mincha, he only gets one set of Malchus. Here I want to add another point. And that is what happens if he adds both Shemin and Levona simultaneously? You're telling me that he only gets one set of Malchus in one Mincha because it was already a Mincha Psula when he got to the second mixture. But what happens if he mixed them both together? And I, I can dramatize it. I can imagine that he's got this whole large Mincha and he adds Solas and Shemen and Levona all together. And now he's mockery of this karma. Are you going to tell me now he only gets one set of Malchus because it was already a Mincha Psula. What do you mean it was already a Mincha Psula? I don't know. Unless this Allah, which again, I don't know enough about Menachas to evaluate this at the very moment he adds a mixture. Yeah, but even that can be avoided because he mixes together Shemin and Levona and then he pours it in. I don't know. And the next discussion we'll have is about how much Levona, what is the minimum volume of Levona that he adds in order to engender the lav and get Malchus? And what's the minimum amount of Shemin that he added to this Minchas Chote in order to generate a chi of Malchus and violate it? So that'll be a Mirzah Shem, our discussion for tomorrow. Oh, but I have a question. Go ahead. I thought that there was a fire coming from Shemaim to eat the Corbanos. So why did we have to bring fire ourselves? Ah, so that's a Gemara, I think, in Mitzvah Yoma, but later on in the Mitzvah, that the Torah doesn't want us to rely on miracles. We have to bring the age as if there is no miracle. And then HaKadosh Baruch Hu from his place in heaven, he'll decide whether or not he'll bring down the fire. All right, let me move on.